Sometimes when you come close to the glaciers, you risk your boat, you risk your life. It's really starting to freak me out that, like, I can't leave. This is Julia. I'm 24 years old. I'm a filmmaker. The seas are rising. We all know that, but how do we know that? Who's the soothsayer spilling the beans on this existential threat? Well, it's my dad. Hey, I found him. My dad is Eric Rigneau. He's one of the world's foremost glaciologists. He spends his life on vast oceans, in a tiny boat hundreds of miles from help, being battered by storms and dodging icebergs. Why? Because the melting of Earth's ancient glaciers could spell the end of the world, and he needs to work out just how much trouble humanity is in. His latest mission is to Greenland to study some of the hardest to reach glaciers in the world. And I'm going with him. What did Ian say when you told him you were bringing your daughter on the trip? Oh, he told me, has your daughter done that before? I said, no. He said, you're crazy. <laughs> I said, no, I don't think so. That's the fishing boat. I'm not helping at all <laughs> because I have too much stuff to carry, but He's gonna take us to the small boat on this boat and then we get on the bigger boat. And if my dad asks me why I'm in a bad mood one more fucking time or calls me my sister's name, I think I'll just stay. There's dogs though. Finally aboard the Ari Moana, I meet the team for the first time. Kim and Florent, the two deckhands, and Nolwen, the captain and my dad's co-researcher. Si j'ai envie de vomir. J'ai juste besoin que ta tête soit au-dessus du bord. The plan is to survey at least 10 glaciers in northwest Greenland over the span of 10 days. The most crucial part of the journey will be measuring the Humboldt Glacier, which has never been done before, as it's fraught with sea ice and very hard to get to. We have to go through some icebergs. If one starts toppling over, it's not good. It's always a little bit of a balance between what we want to do for our science objectives and what is safe for the boat and the people on board. So we finally made it on the boat. One of the bedrooms sleeps two people. It's one person here, one person here. Okay, let's go figure out the toilets. You unlock it. What did you do? I think the challenge is going to not only be to not get seasick, but also privacy. It's really tight in here. It's a boat for four and we're five. Um, also, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, so I'm definitely gonna get in people's way. Glaciologists like my dad study how glaciers and ice caps transform in response to climate change. They then analyze how the movement and melting of this ice in turn influences our climate. We have one big mighty glacier, 120 kilometers wide. That's the Humboldt. This glacier is important because it's one of the big potential contributor to sea level rise. It's been retreating quite rapidly in the last decade. We're not exactly sure why. First glacier of the trip, Bodoin Glacier. There's actually two waterfalls, one there and one further down, which they say happens, but apparently they haven't seen so many of this one before. My dad was literally dancing up and down when, when we got close to it. And he's just in a way better mood, you know? It's not just some ice for him. Norwen told me that the sun's not going to set. I thought we'd at least get like a couple hours of nighttime, but it's 9.30 right now and it looks like it might as well be 3 p.m. I didn't actually sleep that much because we were hitting a lot of icebergs and you can really feel that at the front of the boat. This is the GPS antennas. The sonar is scanning the seafloor and measuring the seafloor depth. The multi-sonar beam is the big instrument attached at the bow of the boat. It sends acoustic beeps throughout the water and across the seafloor. This is how they map out the depth of the sea and the base of the glaciers. We want to know exactly where the foot of the glacier is because then we can measure the total thickness of the ice. Here, you see that part here? Mm -hmm. It's curved inwards, slanted backwards. It's being eaten by the ocean at the bottom. The other tool they're using is a big thermometer called the CTD. 
once or twice a day, it's dropped hundreds of meters down to the seafloor to measure the water temperature. The warm water is at depth because it's also saltier, so it makes it denser. The warm water that we find is zero degrees Celsius, but it's still two degrees above the freezing point of seawater. There's still plenty of heat to melt ice from below. The combination of the immense pressure in the deeper channels found by the sonar and the heat in warmer water found by the CTD thermometer show the team key areas where the glacier is regressing. The seafloor depth is a little bit deeper than what we expected. Now, a little bit deeper, it may not sound like a big deal, but 100 meters deeper might be the difference between having a lot of warm water coming in or not. Everything is about the ocean. Nolan and my dad keep exclaiming how warm the water is. Apparently this is swimsuit weather. I feel like I've been on this boat for a week. It's been 30 hours. <laughs> wow. Today is Sunday, August 18. It's 4 a.m. We're getting out of the fjord now and we're gonna remove our sonar to be a little bit maneuverable and gain a little bit of time to go to Humboldt. Aha! A fish? I'm starting to lose my zen. Doing the dishes was like really nice today because I was just alone for 10 minutes. Sleeping in four hour shifts, waking up for two hours sometime in the middle of the night. It's really starting to freak me out that like I can't leave. It's a challenge being in this place and feeling like sometimes a little bit the boredom and the routine and stuff. Well, it's like an escape. It's like being on a spaceship. You don't impose anything on, on this space. They impose on you. My dad has been coming to Greenland for over 20 years, but this will be his first time seeing Humboldt up close in person. We finally make it through Kane Basin and meet the glacier that's been commanding his attention for years. Goodbye, Jack. I'll never let go. We're here to measure Humboldt's depth and its erosion, the rate of which, combined with its neighboring Peterman Glacier, could cause half a meter in global sea level rise. There are three main gates for Greenland to melt very quickly, and Humboldt is one of them. The warm water in front of Humboldt was not coming from Baffin Bay, but we think it's coming from the north now. This means that this is less exposed to warm water than I thought. My dad's discovery that the water comes from the north means it takes longer for it to reach Humboldt, and it loses a lot of its heat before coming into contact with the glacier. But still, Humboldt, the biggest glacier in Greenland, is retreating by about 600 meters a year. While this might not sound enormous for a 110-kilometer-wide glacier, giant ice caps this far north should not be melting at this speed. But zero degrees is still warm. With climate change, it's going to get warmer and it's going to melt the ice faster. It's going to break up into iceberg faster. Glaciers like Humboldt, it could be the ones that produce the most iceberg into the ocean. So today, August 19, a pretty good day. We went the farthest north I've ever been on the boat. I think we achieved a lot on Humboldt, but it was not easy. That's sea ice. This much ice is really dangerous for the boat, as it isn't made to break through ice this thick. With no one around for hundreds of miles and no radio signal to get help if we get stuck, we had to advance cautiously. And here you see that the boat has to advance in brush uh, ice. Uh, a lot of that ice comes from icebergs that disintegrated completely. 
we had a little bit of wind and swell against us that slowed the boat and uh, some of us were not feeling good. The storm is coming. It should be here tonight, so we're going to finish this up. A 35, 40 to 50 knots wind. That's the kind of wind where you just don't want to be at sea because uh, it's a safety issue. So what my dad's tone of voice does not convey is just how freaking terrifying and life-threatening a storm like this can be. Captain Nolan announced we needed to head south immediately. Otherwise, there was no way we'd make it back to our base in time. We tied everything down and proceeded full speed ahead into the storm. I just took two motion sickness pills because it's really starting to get crazy, so. Seasickness is a discomfort that can last for days. We tried motion sickness pills and anti-nausea patches, but even they couldn't prevent the compulsive vomiting and headaches, even for a veteran like my dad. I knew the crew was worried too because they remained silent throughout the 30-hour nightmare. But after two and a half days, we finally made it to Upernavik unscathed, though it meant we missed some of the glaciers on our trip. I wish we had done a little bit more, but we had some bad weather, so we have to accept that. But the main goal was on board, and we did on board. We do this work in Greenland because we want to understand how things work and project it better. From what we found, we're going to be able to evaluate the risk of this sector a lot better. This summer's hot weather caused a record melt across Greenland. According to the National Snow and Ice Data Center, 90% of the surface of Greenland's ice sheet melted between July 30th and August 2nd, 2019. An estimated 55 billion tons of ice melted into the ocean during this time. It's hard to fathom the scale of the effect these glaciers will have on our collective future, but the findings from this trip will help scientists globally with their climate change projections. We only have one planet, us scientists, who can solve the problem. We can only point it out and just say, oh guys, if we don't do something, it will be even worse. We want to understand how the system works and help the models do better projections so we can better prepare society for what's really going to happen. All these projections are very conservative. From what I've seen in the past 20, 30 years, things are moving much faster. I'm not going to save the world. That would be pretentious. I'm just doing my job. Well, that's fun. I wouldn't do it if it was not fun. Thank you.